Thanks for being with us on this election night. I'm Andrew Hill. And I'm Jessica Porter. Ballots are being counted tonight for a number of local elections as well as two statewide ballot measures. And we have team coverage across the metro with Colette Bordelon in Denver covering the defeat of Prop HH. Chief investigative reporter Tony Kovaleski is in studio for election analysis. Rob Harris is covering the Aurora mayor's race and Shannon Ogden reporting on tonight's Denver school board race. And we want to start on the issue of Prop HH. So let's first take a look at those results tonight. And this one clearly went down in defeat early in the night with the majority of voters saying no to the complex plan to make changes to property taxes. All right, let's go to Colette Bordelon, who spent the evening with those opposing Prop HH. Yeah, they got to go home early tonight. Like you said, they declared victory pretty early on in the evening. They went home feeling accomplished, but a bit surprised that that race was called within the first hour of ballots being dropped. Those I spoke with say it's a sign their hard work during this election paid off. So Prop HH, it was a measure that aimed to provide Coloradans with immediate property tax relief. If it had passed, money that normally goes back to taxpayers would have replaced funding for counties, fire, ambulance, and school districts that depend on property taxes. Opponents say the language on the ballot was confusing, and they were upset it didn't mention the Taxpayers' Bill of Rights, Tabor, at all. When talking with voters, those against the measure say many didn't understand it and didn't think it had anything to do with Tabor. Ultimately, the people in the no on HH camp thought the measure was written in a tricky fashion and that it misled voters. It created winners and losers. And what I'm really happy to hear is that so many Coloradans are saying that, no, this like we have a third option. It's not a yes or, you know, it's not this or nothing. It's we can force you to go back and do your job. It's great to be done with that. And now we're going to gear up for the next uh, <laughs> table battle because we know that it's it's under attack all the time. A spokesperson for Governor Jared Polis said he was disappointed this measure failed, but that he's going to continue working on next steps for property tax relief. Those at this party tonight believe that should come in the form of lowering the assessment rate. Live in Denver, Colette Bordel on Denver 7. All right, Colette, let's bring in Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski now. And Tony, with state voter turnout at about 28% tonight, what are you seeing from these numbers? Well, the numbers have been fascinating, and let, let's start with kind of what Colette was talking about there. Governor Polis has been massively successful as a politician in our state. This is arguably the first and most significant defeat he's ever had as a politician in our state. He took the front position on this, and we have the official statement from the governor and his spokesperson, and it's intriguing. The governor thanks everyone who voted in this year's election. While he is disappointed voters did not pass a long-term property tax cut, he is currently considering next steps, and, and that's going to be the critical question as we move forward here. But let me take you inside the numbers right now. Take a look, a sea of red. Every red county said they did not want HH to pass. There's only a total of one, two, three, four, five, six counties that said yes, they wanted it. And if we take a closer look in the numbers, some counties that have gone back and forth, Arapahoe County has voted blue in recent elections. You see here, 60% in Arapahoe County, or 56% rather in Arapahoe County said no. And then you look at Jefferson County, also a significant county, a bellwether county in the state, 60% said no in Jefferson County. Let's take you down to Douglas County and where voter turnout numbers were high. 60, El Paso County, 68% said no there. And then Douglas County, we pop up here and you can see 67% said no. So the counties that really make a difference in this state, Jefferson, Arapaho, they sent messages. And then in the Democrat counties, the tur voter turnout in Denver County was not as strong as they had hoped. In the Republican counties like El Paso and Douglas, strong voter turnout. You can see why it's a 60, 61% number saying HH is not what the people of Colorado want. A fascinating night, an interesting night for the governor and for our state and deciding now where we go next. And all right. Thank you, Tony. And State Rep Leslie Herod is here with us tonight. So voters were clear that they did not like HH. Where does the state go from here now? Yeah, well, you know, I think there was a lot um, that the voters were considering when it came to HH. It was very it was a very confusing ballot measure for our voters. And quite frankly, they said, Give me a clear picture, a clear understanding of how you're going to reduce my property taxes. How are you going to make Colorado more affordable for me? 
At the end of the day, Colorado has become way unaffordable for so many people. And I think us as the governing party, as Democrats, need to do more. Uh, so I think next steps are going to be interesting. I think that there is the option of a special session on the table. Um, there is also the conversation of what we're going to do in the next session to deliver for Colorado voters. We have got to make it more affordable to live in this, in this state.